Kako, a Karabika and Kakuma, a Karabida properties of Siram, is of Wakanja Ukana, no Kuku Kiris of Kuranta, Jakutu, a group of Tiamba, Kuranga to Genda Mujena election is our Siram, where on the Kuramuz of Agara, Oksoka, Kuevaza, Mukadewa Fe, Mukurembeze Wanga, which tea when you, in you, in you, President Yoweri Kabutam Seveni, Raka Wefube Gualiko, Okuzimba, Nokura Puranya, Ateno Kuagara, Avantua Uma Babere Boom, Akalala, Okuebaza, Nati, President, Engiri Wakwatam Covid, Chigambu Chine in you, Nze Naru was a Wawa Soma, the Afa Yab Siram, Kuanga. Covid ya luo kumulembe kwa mkama wafi na bimuhammad ya miaka lukumi mbina ana mwesatu wakutuka kakati na ye ama gizge wa wa ni mkama wafi gea wa ya ganti mwote muveno na mwote muveno na mwote msigaleno hatina hawe ge ama gizge wa wa buwena chukula nengati eh, president ya suwe mnyo usiramu na, na agenda wala sivu tukweba zanyo ingiriji wa kuata mkovidi na kusava katonda akumbira amanya hago na uvumu all right, now the Prime Minister Robina Nabanja has encouraged people living in rural areas to participate in government programs if they are to increase household incomes. She was launching the cost of inaction on teenage pregnancy report. The report shows that inadequate knowledge about family planning methods affects Uganda's development aspirations based on the huge budget allocated towards health care of teen mothers. The cost of inaction on teenage pregnancy report is highlighting the impacts of inadequate knowledge on reproductive health among young people. The Prime Minister Robina Nabanj expressed government commitment of managing the growing population by prioritizing education to the girl child. Support the girls who unfortunately got pregnant during that period by allowing them to go back to school as a matter of fact. They must go back to school. And the country we have made good progress in improving access to family planning. This is a fact. The fatality rates have declined from 7.1%. Prime Minister Nabanja urged to the population in rural communities to exploit government wealth generation programs to expand household incomes. If, on the other hand, we don't make the right investment, we stand to lose. That is a fact. That's why the NRM government under the wise leadership of Yoweri Kagutam Seven recently launched the Paris Development Model as a new game changer for improving household incomes and putting the 39% of our population that is currently in the subsistence economy into the money economy. One of the key requirements to make informed decisions is having an improved quality of life and the money. I mean money, sente. In the pocket. Uganda needs action for economic development aspirations. Girls forced into child marriage, which is a violation of their human rights, are also more likely to become pregnant. In developing countries, nine out of 10 birth adolescent girls occur within a marriage or a union, and close a third of the girls in this region are married before the age of 18. National Population Council recommends urgent need for health insurance to protect society from uncertainties. Sure that uh, issues of financing are in a place Uganda does not have yet a, a, a national health insurance. Uh, this is something that we need. There is a cost for inaction in that regard. Minister of Finance is pessimistic of the high dependence rate on the limited household incomes and on the national budget. To step up this challenge 
of addressing teenage prisoners in Uganda. In the communities, help us preach the gospel against child marriage and teenage prisoners. Convince parents to keep both boys and girls in school until you trust tertiary level and promote vocational and technical education. The Prime Minister also launched the State of the World Population Report, where at least 645 billion shillings will be spent on the health care of teen mothers and education of children if no urgent action is taken. Abdul Nasele Lubwama, UBC News. And members of parliament have blocked holes in the government report on the rising commodity prices in the country. The report presented by State Minister for Trade, Harriet Ntawazi, suggested increased palm oil production to reduce importation of crude oil. However, legislators expressed reservations calling for immediate, medium and long-term interventions. The rise in commodity prices is a global challenge that has not spared Uganda. This calls for government intervention. It is perhaps the reason why the long-awaited report over the same has been presented before Parliament. And one of the drivers, Madam Speaker, was the increased fuel prices starting mid-January 2020. In the report, factors ranging from national, regional and global have been cited. There is also, notwithstanding, the 10% import duty, which was levied last year on the crude oil, crude palm oil, a raw material for cooking oil and soap, which was last uh, financial year, which increased the factory prices by 6% for palm oil and 38% for soap. Government will address these challenges, including expansion of oil palm production. With the support of Bidico and other companies to areas of Vuvuma, uh, expansion of Kalangala, Bundibujo, the Greater Masaka, and other areas where we shall find uh, land. Members of Parliament disagree with the report, citing missing links. Let's be genuine. Let's have a touch of retrofitting in this country that we can cut short on what on the expenditure, but have something. Uganda, once things are going on, rather going up, we don't have where we base, where we base to get those prices. The reason that's why they should go up. We need to know where do you base. You have not talked about cement. The bag of cement now has gone to 40,000. What impact has it, does it have? on the housing sector. In agreement with the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, the legislators want immediate interventions. 60% of ammonium that is used to make fertilizers is coming from Russia. And Russia has halted the exportation of ammonium nitrate for the next three months. I can tell you production in the world is going to go down for basic consumable commodities and Uganda should brace for this. We are acting on behalf of our people outside there. It is something not, which is not very good. And the whole world is, is waiting for when we are discussing that. And why have we reduced this discussion? Because it is not answering what we want. A more comprehensive report has been demanded by Parliament to address the concerns. And if, if the prices of salt are going high, if the prices of soap are going high and, and one of the justifications she gave was because of fuel. Why isn't the price of milk, for example, going up? So for the poor person who is in the village there, may blame members of parliament for not doing enough to ensure that the prices go down, but it may not be our own making. Government has to do more. Uh, come up with a real time data and factors that are affecting commodity prices. Oil products, laundry soap, and building materials, among others, are some of the products whose prices Ugandans are finding it hard to cope with. Henry Okrut, UBC.
Now, the Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Wariomonsi, has responded to a statement uh, of police summoning him over talk that the late Speaker Jacob Olanya was poisoned. Addressing media in Kampala, Wariomonsi, who was responding to the Monday 11th media address by the police spokesperson, Fred Ananga, did not want to be dragged into what, referred, what he referred as drama. I know the Honorable Chiwanda appeared on a radio talk show and mentioned my name in his submissions. And uh, now I want to warn the Honorable Chiwanda and Fred Enanga <laughs> to stop mixing me in the drama of poison. Minister for ICT and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Bariomos, has responded to claims by the police spokesperson, Fred Nanga, that he is among those expected to aid police over the late Jacob Oranya's poisoning talk. Police should do its work professionally and stop getting excited. And just so I'm warning Honorable Chiwanda and Fred Nanga <laughs> to stop with that excitement of dragging me into this issue of poison when I am the one actually who first told the Ugandans that is Jacob Alanya died of a natural illness. I have been on record saying he had cancer even before the medical report came because I'm a medical doctor myself. During a weekly security briefing in Kampala last night, police spokesperson Fred Nanga told journalists that a section of members of the public will be interrogated over the matter. So we are therefore summoning all those persons with other causes of death, including poison, poisoning for further interview and statement recording. Uh, this will include Honorable Godfrey Suvi Chiwanda. He also mentioned uh, Honorable Chris Variomonsi. We have Honorable Gilbert Olanya. We want them to provide us with a chain of evidence regarding that other cause of death, of poisoning that they allege. The ICT Minister, Dr. Chris Wariumus, responded to cautioning police against the breaching professional code of conduct. And police should be professional in the way it conducts investigations. One, summons are not issued through press conferences. It is CID that prepares summons and summons are delivered to the people who are being summoned, but not through press conferences. He says delegations levied against him cannot be treated lightly. I have received calls from all over because I'm a politician. I have voters and supporters in the country. You know I hold the position of a vice chairman NRM. Western Uganda voted by NRM members the whole country. I am a member of parliament. So people are concerned. Should we come and escort you as you go to police? <laughs> Dr. Chris Bariomos even comments on the timing of the police summons. Even it is improper to start issuing someone is the man who has buried his son just a few days. Like I have said, maybe Jacob Alanya's father needs counseling so that he can come to terms with the loss of his son. At this rate, Fred and Anger might summon Jacob Alanya <laughs> by the time we issue summons. Because now his father is saying, my son told me, so it will be Jacob Walanya's word against his father. So are you, he might end up summoning Jacob Walanya. The chief government communicator reiterates that the earlier Walanya's post-mortem report issued is still valid and should be respected. Robert Onyango, UBC News. Now the bishops of Greater Ankole region have appealed to companies, business entities, institutions and individuals to offer financial assistance towards this year's Martyrs Day celebrations. While addressing the press at All Saints Church in Kampala, Bishop Ankole Diocese Dr. R rather, right Reverend Dr. Fred Shelton uh, Mwesigwa said they have a budget of 600 million shillings. The province of Church of Uganda chose Greater Ankole Diocese to host and organize this year's 3rd June Matters Day. Greater Ankole comprises of Ankole, West Ankole, North Ankole, South Ankole, and Northwest Ankole Dioceses, where they expect to have about 200 pilgrims. 
including two people above 70 years. This will be the first Matters Day to be celebrated after two years of the COVID-19 lockdown. Celebrated uh, each year. I hope this preparation will give us momentum to attract many people because they are expectant. The committee that is in charge is aware that we shall have to make sure we observe the SOPs. It is on the theme, hope beyond affliction, with emphasis of hope after COVID and the story of the Uganda matters being one of hope. There will be a Thanksgiving service at All Saints Cathedral Church, Nakasero, on 22nd April, in which to start a fundraising to support activities. The dioceses have raised 110 million, which has, is already on the count. And we are, after Easter, we've targeted to bring the remaining, which is about uh, 90 million, almost making 200 million. The chairman of the organizing committee, Ephraim Kamuntu, said 3rd June is Faith Best Tourism Attraction Day. They put Uganda on the map, they eat our food. They stay in our hotels. They drive in our cars. Indeed, the contribution, faith-based tourism, contribution to national tourism, and consequently contributing to foreign exchange of the country is huge. Other activities include publishing a historical coffee table book featuring the unique features of Ankole, like the role of Christianity and the East African revival movement. The preacher of the day is expected to be Emeritus Bishop Samson Mwaluda, a renowned international evangelist and guest of honor, His Excellency Jeno Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. I'm Nafka Farida and Mary Namkose in Kampala. Economic Development, Uganda Investment Authority and Turkish Embassy are due to host a tourism summit. State Minister for Finance in charge of investment and privatization, Evelyn Anita, told the media that the tourism summit is intended to increase tourism between Uganda and Turkey. To increase tourism between Uganda and Turkey, Ministry of Finance Uganda Investment Authority will jointly host a two-day Uganda Turkey Investment Trade Industry and Tourism Summit 2022 on the theme Accelerating Investment, Trade, Industry and Tourism between Uganda and Turkey in the post-COVID-19 era. State Minister for Finance in charge of investment and privatization Ivrin Anite told the media in Kampala that the summit will give Ugandan investors skills in using technology. We're going to get selected business partners who have repeatable and credible business background in the conference to partner with the intention of getting financial support and technical or technological advancement from Turkey. The Turkish ambassador says COVID-19 affected the tourism sector and this summit will help restore the sector. Has surpassed uh, $300 million during the COVID and in spite of the uh, trade restrictions and the uh, mobility restrictions because of Turkish cargo doing a very good job. The Director General Uganda Investment Authority says this summit will increase deal room as Uganda becomes more attractive to investors. Uh, so we are going to encourage you to register uh, uh, for joint ventures, business to business partnerships, uh, uh, and be able uh, to have a clear co collaboration with our investors that are coming uh, uh, from Turkey. So therefore, to that extent, we want to ensure that joint ventures happen between Ugandan businesses and Turkish businesses to share and we are going to be having deal rooms. Meanwhile, government is addressing capital, and next take will be minimum wage paid to Ugandans. A master's degree holder today is sitting at home without a job. How about the uneducated? So let's first fix the major challenges 
then we will fix the issue of minimum wage. The summit, slated for 10th to 11th of May 2022, will showcase the diverse investment opportunities in manufacturing, industrial parks, mineral beneficiation, agricultural value chain, and tourism. Irene Faith Nantongo, Andrew Sebira, UBC News. Meanwhile, NRM Canada chapter members have met the Commission of Parliament to discuss key issues ahead of the Canada Convention uh, scheduled for July this year. The Commissioner pledged to help in preparing for the event that will start on the 8th and run till the 10th. The team led by their chairperson Fred Chinene, the ambassador of diaspora affairs Abe Walusimbi, and the presidential advisor on youth affairs Natural Change, among other delegates, paid a cutter service to the Commission of Parliament to discuss about fundamental factors for the conversion. <laughs> The Ambassador Diaspora Affairs Abe Walusimbi urged the NRM party members to attend the convention as it will be a gate opener for opportunities. The event is going to be actually historical. Uh, we have about uh, over 100,000 Ugandans in Canada, just in Canada. You, you know Canada, we have a lot, we're talking about even jobs, because we want our Ugandans to get jobs. So it's very important, we, can, we have to work join hands with this Canadian. So, for example, if we get people from the parliament. NRM Canada chapter chairperson Fred Chinene and the presidential advisor on youth affairs Natural Achinji called on Ugandans to consider this a golden opportunity as there is a lot to learn and share. What we are trying to, to, to do is to bring those people closer to each other so, so that they can explain to us if I want to buy land, what can I do? If I want to do this, I want to run for member of parliament. Can I? Yes, you can, but there are certain issues which you have to follow. There is dual citizenship happening right now, but due to lack of communication, people won't get a chance. We shall have uh, the detailed discussions about the, the economic, social and political affairs affecting both Ugandans in Canada and, and other people in the diaspora because we expect America and UK and the United Kingdom to participate. The fact that we have had uh, 176 people registering from both UK and USA to attend the event. The Commissioner to Parliament, also Member of Parliament from Zombo, Esther Apoyochan, appreciated the move by the visiting team and cautioned them to showcase the positive side of Uganda while in Canada, promising to sideline with them in the preparations. I can always find time to talk to her and say we had a delegation and this is the interest. We as part of Parliament are supposed to be there and therefore we shall nominate members of Parliament to be part of the what? of the event country i think we are doing already enough work in trying to market uganda outside there but if we can all come together and tell people that look we have challenges but we the, the challenges are a less percentage we have much more benefits in this country ivan juko weekly from dutch ubc news Today in history. On 12 April 1991, the African National Congress, ANC, made public its proposed constitutional principles. Among the things that the discussion document called for was a non racial democratic state with a Bill of Rights, the independence of judiciary, and other related issues. This was followed by the first plenary session of the Convention for a Democratic South Africa which began on 21st December 1991 at the World Trade Center, Johannesburg. Pay for your dream phone, Mpola Mpola. Get your dream phone today for as low as 1,400 Uganda shillings with free data for a year and pay slowly, slowly. All phones come with daily 50 MBs for 12 months. Repayment period is one year. 
available at MTN service centers and M Copper shops. COVID-19 is still here with us. As Professor Magichigozi states, the time is now for all of us to get vaccinated. When we have one person who's not vaccinated, it affects everybody around them, most especially the ones close to you. Keep your family safe. Anyone right now who's over 18 should go and get vaccinated. Because of the new COVID-19 circulating variants like Omicron, it is very important for all of us to be fully vaccinated with two doses of the same vaccine type. It's only those getting Johnson & Johnson who receive only a single dose to be fully protected. Even after vaccination, continue to adhere to all SOPs by wearing a mask properly, covering your mouth and nose, washing your hands regularly with soap and clean water, or using an alcohol-based sanitizer, maintaining physical distance of at least two meters from others, and avoiding crowds. Echa COVID-19. Chijakugwa. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and partners. Even with my grandson, a doctor at my side, I struggled to get the help I needed. But he saw something that day. He began to work day and night. He wouldn't quit, even when people said no. He wouldn't stop fighting. He knew... Total Energies has undertaken a number of initiatives aimed at ensuring that Ugandan entities and citizens are adequately equipped to participate in the oil and gas sector. Some of these initiatives include training of heavy goods vehicle drivers. Total Energies contracted safe right way to develop skills for the drivers from Albertine region. They accommodated three meals, free transport from here to Kampala. Everything is catered for by Total. We do train ladies as well. And as I talk right now, we have got another team of about 15 ladies in Kampala. People are getting crushes on the way because they don't know what to do. I've got a lot of skills. I know how we should protect one another, the safety of the other road users, which wasn't the case before. And I never expected to really sit in such a truck and drive it. I'm happy and humbled to be part of this group. Total Energy's EP Uganda is committed to the empowerment of Ugandans to take an active part in the overall development of the oil project in Uganda. Welcome back. You are still watching News Tonight. City lawyer Hassan Malema Birizi has labored requesting court to be transferred from Luzira Maximum Prison to Chitalia, where he was committed by the High Court. Now, Mabirizi, who was transferred from Chitalia Prison to Luzira Maximum Prison without his consent, claims persecution by prison authorities. The accused city lawyer Asani Malima Bidizi, who is pending with charges of offensive communication for insulting the person of Justice Musa Sekana, has appeared at Bugana Road Magistrates Court. Before Magistrate Sanula Nambozo, Mabirizi informed court that he was not able to proceed with the case when his rights are being violated by the prison authorities. I told the officer in charge that I was almost dying in this facility. But do they even mind? I don't know if they just want to find a dead body. Alternatively, if, if court sees that there is maybe there is something which is needed to be looked into, then my lord, your worship, uh, let me be taken to Maxon Bay and not Apa. That's also within the Zira. Mabil is informed court that he was transferred from Kitalia government prison without his consent, claiming that his life is in danger. The officer in charge of Kitalia, Minimax prison, Mr. Ayukomundu Hussein, now, instead of, instead of complying with the orders to give me submissions and give me internet, he practically chased me out of what he calls his prison and threw me to the, to the maximum security prison of high core criminals. I'm a prison of civil issues, but I'm kept in, in you cannot even see, I don't know how I can describe it, but it is torturous. He asked court to transfer him back to Chitalia government prison, where he was remanded by high court. However, State Anthony Joan Keko objected to his prayer. The application by 
the accused by the applicant is clearly against <coughs> the Uganda prison's forces. The accused person should make his application to the court that, remand, that committed him. The attorney general that legally represents the prison's forces be served. And uh, I've, I've appeared before this court several times, coming from Chitalia. So it is possible, and it has been possible. Lawyer Asani Malimabiris made an interim application, urging Magistrate Nambozo to overrule prosecution prayers. But you may not, they may, I may not come back if they take me to the last facility. You may not deliver a judgment with any person. And this is serious, you see, I am not a spy. I cannot. Any person you should kill me. That facility is killing me. In case of an adjournment, let it be too much. Magistrate Sanwa Nambozo the matter to 14th April 2022 to deliver her ruling. In another development, Magistrate Marion Mangini has said 27th April 2022 to resume with the hearing of the case where lawyer Isaac Semakade is facing charges of offensive communication when he insulted the person of Justice Musa Sekan. Although defense legal team was able to proceed with the hearing, said he was not able to proceed. Deborah Namamonde, Nantongo Rebecca, UBC News. And our Minister for Energy and Mineral Development, Ruth Nankabira, has said government will roll out strict policies to force if to forcefully eradicate the use of charcoal and firewood for cooking. She was commissioning a pilot biomass to electricity at Mulago Hospital, targeting to reduce the social environmental impacts that come with deforestation. 96% of Ugandans rely on charcoal and firewood, which undermines the country's strategic development objectives. Deforestation continues at this present rate. The country's forests are at great risk. And if deforestation is not addressed, the potential impacts on food insecurity, on disease, and even potentially conflict are likely to be exacerbated and to reverse Uganda's development trajectory. The country is planning to reduce on the rampant deforestation by reinforcing stringent policies for a paradigm shift from biomass to electricity. We have to make sure that we have distributed electricity, widen the electricity distribution network, lower the tariffs, make electricity reliable, then put stringent measures, taxes on biomass, on charcoal and on wood. The commissioned modern facility at Mwanamujimu Nutrition Unit at Mulago Hospital has capacity to accommodate 180 malnutrition children on a daily basis. Same gesture is extended to a bigger kitchen because not only the children have malnutrition, but all these patients who come to the bigger Mulago, we need to take care of their nutrition. When they come, they have chest infections, they have diabetes, they have uh, intestinal problems. The ministry is planning to reduce electricity tariffs through encouraging the public to make good use of the excess power produced. Lydia Chomkama, UBC News. And the State Minister for Agriculture, Fred Chakulaga Buino, has donated vanilla seeds and pesticides to vanilla farmers in Iganga district. Now, the farmers requested the minister to encourage young people to join vanilla growing. This request comes in against concerns about vanilla thefts uh, from gardens in the region. After a fall in global vanilla prices, many farmers lost interest in vanilla trade and abandoned gardens. This led to an increase in thefts of the crop since most vanilla farmers ignored hiring private security guards to protect the gardens. State Minister for Agriculture Fred Chakula Gabuino says that government will strengthen the quality and increase market value for vanilla farmers in the country. <laughs> Uh, 
Farmers in Iganga want the Ministry of Agriculture to interest youth join vanilla growing, which will also curb vanilla theft in the region. We will be vanilla or we eat the day for Nimido. Abafuka to Abafuka with Vanet, with Vanet Tanido, Kuanti Valima Vanida, Bajakfuka, Bajakua Lovna is Wokula and Gabaluanisa. Obubiwa vanida. Kubanga, umuta sobota sola kumante ya baka ampala na jana bavanida wano higanga. Wano, mida kuchisa kula mwini. Mida isuli kuchisa kula mwini. Mida si mwini. Mwini chakula gamu sama kwa hafi zetu. Kutukula mbu hafi. Tupayetu limanga buduma, budandari, bofu nye wogolia. Mwini vanida yungu. Mwini vanida yungu. Mwini vanida kuna wevu. Mwini vanida yungu. Mwini vanida yungu. Mwini vanida yungu. Mwini vanida yungu. In 2018, Uganda produced an estimated 300,000 kilogram of vanilla and exported 23,000 kilogram of salted vanilla worth 6.4 million US dollars. <laughs> Now there was a treasure hunt for gold crystals in Muyenga as residents and passers-by of Tankhill Muyenga in Much India Dis Division searched for the crystals that are alleged to have fallen from a speeding car. The residents alleged that the minerals belonged to a Congolese national who returned on a motorcycle after minutes asking them to help her trust the, min the crystals promising a cash reward. There was an opportunity to get rich for residents of Muyenga Tank Hill and passers-by in much India Division. As they went into a treasure hunt for what looked like gold minerals that dropped from a Congolese lady. The golden treasure mineral crystals fell from a speeding car of a Congolese national traveling from Muyenga to Kampala. I witnessed the same moments later. The owner returned on a motorcycle, promising to reward anyone who picked them. Congo, Oscar, it's my own de Bameka. Mubaba de Kuboda. It's my side is on Miss Badeba Vaco. At Badeba Kuboda and Bubaga and Yasumura Gold in Ayika. Tavanivaku and Vatanko and Avamuronda. Rubulo, the Okuvida Daleri, a Muyanga Waguru. The Nose of Satu Nevampera Waka sent it. Given the color and nature of the gold look alike crystals, the owner lost patience, leaving residents and passers-by in the treasure hunt. The saying that God's Kampala city is known for the ill-fated was justified, as much brains conducted business buying from the hunters. <laughs> Drivers bought the gold crystals from the pickers, leading to an increase in the price compared to early moments, calling for border border riders to engage in the hunt. <laughs> Many pedestrians walked with eyes focusing on the ground for any remaining minerals. The price of gold crystals ranged from 10 to 50,000 shillings per crystal. <laughs> The NRM chairperson Muyenga Bukasa Wodi Asino Mal handed over some of the gold crystals he got to Muyenga Community Police. And while the person was moving, maybe the person had a bag and it had a hole, and all this gold was pouring along the road from Muyenga up to Race Corner. Peter Queen Muyenga, a lot of gold along Tank Hill Road. Everybody is rich. But for us as leaders, whatever we recovered, 
we handed over to police. Ivan Juko, Idithi Flower Namuleme, UBC News. With that, we take a quick break. We return with business news. This is News Tonight. Need to send money to a loved one, but you don't have enough on your phone? Have you run out of fuel, but you don't have enough money? Do you want to pay for yaka or water, but have insufficient funds? Or do you want to shop, but you don't have enough money? Don't worry. Get along with MTN Momo Advance. Momo Advance tops up your Momo to complete your transactions. Dial star 165 star 5 star 3 hash to apply. MTN Momo Advance is always available when you need it. This is how we play. Play with power. This is how we do it. How we put a team together. This is how we pass on greatness. Because with this team to inspire us, there's nothing we can't do. Go for goals and win. Buy a Pepsi glass bottle or Pepsi Max 330ml. Check under the crown and win soda, TVs, caps, t-shirts and cash. Redeem prizes at any Pepsi depot or truck countrywide. Terms and conditions apply. Pepsi. For the love of it. Be alert. Do not share your Airtel Money PIN number with anyone. Airtel Uganda employees will never ask for your Airtel Money PIN number on call, SMS, or by email. All SIM card registrations, SIM card verifications, or SIM swaps are done at clearly branded Airtel shops and not on phone. To report any fraudulent activity, please call 100 immediately. The official calling number for Airtel promotions is... 0200 100 100. Stay alert on Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and a 